New bean, new video. The current project I'm working on is a compilation of small, short comics so that I can really get into making uh, comic stuff again. In fact, on my website, thechillmethod.com, which you can always take a look at if you want, I do have some old work from a manga project I still want to do called Imitation Day, but it became more and more clear that I need to be working on smaller things and working my way up and learning the the overall way to do things before then trying to bite off more than I can currently chew. Now, the reason I'm showing you this comic is because I can't actually put it into that self-publication. The subject matter being a licensed product, which in this case is Pokemon, means that it would be a bad idea for me to include it in a collection of other short stories, but I really wanted to, it's like a little test, this was done quite a while ago, this comic actually. I'm only just putting a video together about it now. The idea behind this story was more to see whether I could tell a story about Blue rather than Red from Generation 1 Pokemon. It always felt like he was competing with the Red character, and I mean, well that's clear because he's known as the rival, but I wanted to see whether there'd be a reason, like a motivation behind that, because he seems to specifically take issue with Red. And so I remembered that Professor Oak himself couldn't remember Blue's name. I'm not saying that's the only reason, we're not going like Spider-Man 2, is it Amazing Spider-Man 2? We're not going down that route, but still, the fact that he doesn't feel like he's been recognised or respected by his own family, and yet this Red guy is. You know, I feel like I'd be a little bit frustrated by that personally. So then I thought to myself, what if Blue got to Mewtwo first if he'd gone to the Cerulean Cave and tried to capture him? And how would that have played out? Because unlike Red, Blue is motivated to beat Red. He's specifically in that story somebody that wants to do that and therefore isn't going in with the same kind of let's say quote unquote if you could even call it morally pure intentions that that red has and therefore mewtwo in this idea uh, although i didn't have you know like more than one page to get it across with um is pointing out that weakness and has turned the party that blue has against him because that's the depiction i have of blue is that he's become like not like a dark like warped character but still warped and twisted by this obsession to be better than red rather than to be the best him he can be since in generation two he actually does become a gym leader and that he does find his way i feel like those two things needed joining and that final moment in the comic as you'll see at the end where he decides that capturing Mewtwo wouldn't be right for him and that he needs to find his own way. Also I actually played Pokemon Yellow when I was doing this particular comic so that I had some kind of reference point that game's aged okay. In fact, one of the cool things I found is that when you're playing it in colour, there's only four colours that they pull from because it had to also work with a Game Boy Black and White. At least that's why I think it was only four colour like sprites. But I, I found it cool how that meant that like, it would be cool to play around with that. I've gone with eight colours, obviously. And if you actually look in the second panel of the comic, the party that Blue has is the party he has if he's constantly losing to Red. So I made a, a very deliberate choice to make sure that like, anyone that played Generation 1 Pokemon Yellow knew exactly the circumstances that Blue had been to, or through should I even say, in order to get to where he was. So he's like the, the, at the lowest point he can possibly be. You know, it's been quite some time now, we're talking almost half a year since I drew this comic, and I still specifically remember the decision I made in the last panel, which was to do blue in blue for the almost entirety, like 90% of the comic, and then when he finally comes into his own, and he's looking at the, uh, the Viridian Gym, 
that he is ready to make something of himself rather than chase down this, you know, idea that he has to be specifically greater than Red. Um, I mean, that's not an entirely true depiction of his character now that I think about it, because he did also want to be the league champion, but he didn't. As far as I can tell, he, he gave up that pretty quickly. And I feel like, again, that's another reason why I wanted to do, like, a a filler story between Gen 1 and 2. Because I feel like, like it's not a, a dead, like, certainty that Blue was going to become a gym leader. That's a very specific thing to want to be. And I feel like something has to push you toward that. Something has to show you that that's what you wanted to do. Because it's quite the difference, like wanting to raise the next generation as opposed to wanting to be the best in that particular generation, you know, like no one ever was. See what I did there? So I've saved these little obligatory plugs for the end of the video, but if you want to follow more of what I do, head over to Instagram. It's a bit of a scary thought, but I actually post more stuff there than even my own website. Well worth looking into following and everything else. I am planning to make more videos though, I mean October's a pretty busy month as you'll probably know for artists, so I can only imagine if I'm not at least doing a video some point in the middle of October. There will at least be one by the end of October, once all the fun is done. Until then though, I really hope you have a lovely day. I mean, hit the subscribe button and all that, and the like button and the bell. And until next time, have a nice one.